Welcome back. We're going to be looking at some examples for evaluating limits of trig functions. And we're going to start with this limit right here. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 times sine x over 9x. So remember, when we look at these limits, we want to try to find our special limits hidden somewhere within here. As long as our x is approaching 0, well, we can do that. We can look for our sine x over x and our 1 minus cosine x divided by x. In this case, we don't have any cosine, so we can see that we're going to be working with sine in this case. And I already see our special limit. I see sine x over x right there. So what we can do is we can actually split up this limit to have that coefficient of 2 ninths times that sine x over x, and we can evaluate it using that. So I'm going to rewrite this limit as the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 over 9 times sine x over x. And then we're just able to evaluate by writing 2 ninths times the limit of this as x approaches 0, which we know to be 1 because that's our special limit. And then that's going to be equal to 2 ninths. Next, we're going to be looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of 6 minus 6 times cosine x all over 5x. So now we're going to be working with cosine instead of sine. So now we want to look for that 1 minus cosine x over x in any way that we can. In this case, I see our 1 minus cosine x term, but it's looking a little bit different than we're used to because of these sixes. So we can actually start by pulling that out. I'm going to write the limit as x approaches 0 of 6 times 1 minus cosine x. So that's our first step pull out that 6 so that we can see what we're working with. And so now that we've taken out that 6, I can actually see our special limit right in front of us. We have our 1 minus cosine x over x. And so just like with the last problem where we had 2 ninths that we could pull out, in this case we have this 6 fifths that we can pull out and we can evaluate this pretty nicely. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 6 fifths times 1 minus cosine x over x. This is the same as this because if we multiplied this by this, we would get this function. So it doesn't matter if we split up this function in this way because they're being multiplied together. So then we have our special limit. We know that this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 6 fifths. So then we can evaluate our limit and we'll have 6 fifths times 0, which is going to be equal to 0. And remember, the reason why we can go from this step to this step is because the limit of two functions being multiplied together is equal to their limits multiplied together, right? So the limit as x approaches 0 of 6 fifths is 6 fifths, and the limit as x approaches 0 of this function is 0. So we can multiply their limits together to get this answer. Next, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of 2x divided by 3x. So this one is a little bit different. We haven't seen a limit approach 0 for a tangent function yet. So we're going to have to use some knowledge about trig functions in order to evaluate this. Well, remember that tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x. And it doesn't matter what this x is. I mean, it's going to be the same for these two as well. So we can say that this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x divided by cosine of 2x all divided by 3x. And this would all be one term up there. So now the next step that we would take is to simplify this a little bit first. And we see we have this 3x on the bottom. I would like to maybe make this fraction a little simpler. So remember, if you're dividing by something, you can actually rewrite this as the top or the numerator multiplied by the reciprocal of the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over cosine of 2x multiplied by the reciprocal, which in this case would be 1 over 3x. So now at this point, you want to ask yourself, what do you need? I see that we have this sine of 2x on the top. So that makes me think I need a 2x on the bottom so I can use my special limit that would give me 1. And you'll notice that this cosine term down here doesn't look like what you'd expect when we're looking for a special limit that has cosine in it. You know, we typically look for that 1 minus cosine x, but this term is just cosine. And this actually isn't even a problem because cosine of 0 is 1, so having just that on a denominator would not be a problem. But this 3x, on the other hand, that's going to be a problem because you plug in 0, you're going to get 0 in the denominator. 
So we have to find a way to simplify this. And I think the best way to go about that is to work with this sine 2x. So we said that we would want a two on the bottom so that we can simplify this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna multiply by a form of one of two over two. And then we can simplify to the limit as x approaches zero of sine of two x. And then I'm going to pull this two and this x to make this work. So I'm gonna write that over 2x. And then we can just put everything else together that is left over. So we're gonna be multiplying by two divided by cosine of 2x, and that's gonna be multiplied by that leftover three. So then we can take the limit of this function because now that we got rid of that x that was gonna cause some problems, this is gonna simplify to a limit of one, and then we can just plug zero into this to get our answer. So we'll have one times two over three times cosine of two times zero, which is actually just going to be one, right? Cosine of two times zero would be cosine of zero, and cosine of zero is one, so we'd actually have one times two thirds. And so our answer is two thirds. So if you haven't watched the lesson, you're probably a little confused on why we were able to simplify the limit of sine of 2x over 2x to one, when I previously mentioned it was sine x over x. Well, I explained this in the beginning of our lesson for this topic, so I'm actually gonna put a little card at the top of this video that you can click on that will take you to the lesson, so if this is confusing, you can learn about that there. All right, so now we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches pi over four of one minus tangent x divided by cosine x minus sine x. And this limit is a little bit off the trail a little bit from what we've been doing before, because before we were looking at our special limits where x approaches zero, but in this case, x is approaching pi over four, so we can't use our special limits, and this is in fact just a regular limit involving trig functions. So we have to treat it as such. We can't use any of our special limits here. So the first thing that you always do with a function like this, and I wasn't showing this before because as the limit approaches zero and you have an x on the bottom, it's always just gonna be zero and you're gonna have that indeterminate form. But in this case, since it's not zero, we're approaching pi over four, I recommend you plug it in and see what happens. Because sometimes with these trig limits, you can just plug in your x value, even though it looks complicated, and still get a nice answer at the end. So let's see what happens. We'll have one minus tangent of pi over four divided by cosine of pi over four minus sine of pi over four. Now, we know that cosine of pi over four is equal to the square root of two over two, and sine of pi over four is also equal to the square root of two over two, and so we're going to have zero in the denominator. But let's look at the numerator. We have one minus tangent of pi over four, and tangent of pi over four is one. So we're gonna have one minus one, and that's also going to be zero. So unfortunately, we still have our indeterminate form and we're gonna to have to manipulate this function in order to take its limit. So like we said before with our previous example, tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x. So I would actually recommend that that's the first thing we change in this limit. So I'm gonna write the limit as x approaches pi over four of one minus sine x divided by cosine x all over cosine x minus sine x. And then what we can see is that this numerator can maybe be simplified a little bit so that we can have some canceling occur. So what I'm gonna do is try to get a common denominator between this one term and this term here and hope that that allows us to simplify somehow. So in this case, in order to get the same denominator or a common denominator, we're gonna have to multiply this one by cosine x over cosine x. So that's what I'll do. We'll have our limit as x approaches pi over four of cosine x over cosine x, remember that's still one, right? Because anything divided by itself is one, minus sine x over cosine x. And that's still gonna be over cosine x minus sine x. So what do you notice here then? Well, now that we have a common denominator, we can actually combine the top here and we'll have cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. And that's important because then the numerator here will be the same as the denominator here. So then we're gonna have some canceling occur which is what we want. So let's rewrite that. We'll have the limit as x approaches pi over four of cosine x minus sine x over cosine x all over that cosine x minus sine x, right? All we did was combine these two fractions. So then since we have a similar term here, we're gonna be able to cancel that. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the limit as x approaches pi over four of cosine x minus sine x 
over cosine x multiplied by the reciprocal of our denominator, right? If you're dividing by something, you can also just multiply by the reciprocal of that term. So in this case, that would be one over cosine x minus sine x. And then we get a really nice thing happen here that these two terms will cancel and we're just gonna be left with one and cosine x. So then we can rewrite this to complete our limit evaluation. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit and now we can continue on with our work. So since these two terms cancel out and we'll be left with one over cosine, we can rewrite to have the limit as x approaches pi over four of one over cosine x. And now we can plug in our pi over four and we'll have one over cosine of pi over four, which we know is square root of two over two. And so then this would be equal to two over the square root of two which if you rationalize, meaning you just multiply by the square root of two on the top and the bottom, we would then have our answer of the square root of two. Okay, next we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches zero of sine squared x over x. So once again, we wanna look for our special limits wherever they may be in our problem. So I see a sine x here and I also see an x, but this is sine squared x. So we have two sine functions here that we can actually split up. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write the limit as x approaches zero of sine x times sine x over x. And now I can see that I have a sine x and an x. Now let's split that up. So we'll say that that's equal to the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x times sine x over one because we already took this x out so there's nothing left in the denominator so we would just have sine x over one which would just be sine x. So then we can take our limit because we know that this is equal to one as x approaches zero and then we can just plug zero into this. The reason why we couldn't plug in zero before, right, was because if we plug it in, we're gonna get an indeterminate form because we'll have zero on the bottom and zero on the top. So when we evaluate, we'll have one times zero. And that zero is because if we plug in zero for sine of x, well, sine of zero is zero. So then we just have our limit here of one times zero, which is going to equal zero. Next, we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x squared divided by x. So if you remember, I said it doesn't matter what is inside your sine function, as long as it's also on the bottom, your special limit applies. So in this case, we want an x squared on the bottom here, right? Since we have an x squared inside our sine function, we're gonna want x squared on the bottom too. So let's multiply by a form of one of x over x, and then we can simplify and we'll have the limit as x approaches zero of sine x squared over x squared. And I'm not gonna bring this in to the top here. I'm just gonna keep it outside. Still the same thing, it's still equivalent. And then we have our special limit right here. So then we can say that this is equal to one times plug zero into x because as x approaches zero, we can plug it into this x here. So we'll have zero. And then our answer would be zero in this case. All right, and lastly, we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x quantity squared over x squared. And remember, one of our special limits is that one minus cosine x divided by x is equal to zero. So I actually see that here twice. We have one minus cosine x squared that can be split up into two quantities. And we also have x squared, which can be split up into x times x. So we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x times one minus cosine x all over x times x. We can rewrite it like that. So then we can split it up into two components with the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x over x times one minus cosine x over x. This is still the same as this. And now we have two of our special limits back to back. So this is simply just equal to zero times zero, which equals zero. All right, so hopefully those examples were helpful for you to see how to evaluate limits of trig functions. If you watched through this video but haven't seen the lesson, I recommend you do go watch the lesson. It's going to be very helpful in understanding these examples more than maybe you already do. But if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments below. And so that's all I have for this video. I will see you next time.